This is a vintage U87 Neumann microphone. You guys have heard this on countless records because it is the de facto gold standard vocal mic. This plucky little upstart is a $70 my mic from AliExpress. Can it hold up against the real thing? Let's find out on Fearless Gear Reviews. Okay, just a little background here. This is my vintage U87. It's gorgeous. I paid $3,000 for this in 2008. Uh, it was my present to myself for quitting smoking. I promised myself if I could quit smoking for six months, I'd buy myself a vintage U87. So I took all the money I would have blown on cigarettes and got something awesome. And this was my number one mic of choice for a very, very long time. It's still really awesome. It doesn't get pulled out of the equipment rack very much these days, but it is good to have one on hand just in case you want that certain sound. Now, a friend of mine told me about this, that AliExpress were selling U87 clones, and I thought, okay, what the hell? Let's drop the whole $70 and get one shipped over here and see what it sounds like. Okay, honestly, I'm not expecting much. I mean, like most of the weight is in the brass casing. There's not exactly what you'd say a lot in terms of circuit design, and I'm not too sure about the capsule because we really can't see it. By way of comparison, if you pull the cover off the U87, there's actually something going on here. Needless to say, hopes are not very high for this, but hey, you know, miracles can happen. Tell you what, let's roll it on a couple of sources and see what happens. One of the things Ford Prefect had always found hardest to understand about human beings was their habit of continuously stating and repeating the very, very obvious. As in, it's a nice day, or you're very tall, or oh dear, you seem to have fallen down a 30-foot well. Are you all right? At first, Ford had formed a theory to account for the strange behavior. If human beings don't keep up exercising their lips, he thought, their mouths probably seize up. After a few months' consideration and observation, he abandoned this theory in favor of a new one. If they don't keep on exercising their lips, he thought, their brains start working. The Encyclopedia Galactica defines a robot as a mechanical apparatus designed to do the work of a man. The marketing division of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation defines a robot as your plastic pal who's fun to be with. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy defines the marketing division of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation as a bunch of mindless jerks who'll be the first against the wall when the revolution comes. With a footnote to the effect that the editors would welcome application from anyone interested in taking over the post of robotics correspondent. Curiously enough, an edition of the Encyclopedia Galactica had found the good fortune to fall through a time warp from a thousand years in the future to find the marketing division of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation as a bunch of mindless jerks who were the first against the wall when the revolution came. Well, now, that's not exactly what I would call a subtle difference. Uh, this might kind of sounded like it had a blanket thrown over top of it. Uh, not too impressive either way. And yes, I did try it on both sides just to make sure I had the mic facing the correct way. I did make that mistake a few years ago, and I wanted to make absolutely certain I didn't do that again. So yeah, not too impressive on the spoken word thing. So next up, let's try it out as a guitar mic. Let's mic up the Soldano going through the rev cab and see what we get. Once again, there's no real comparison. The U87 just destroys this thing. Um, I got to say, I'm really concerned because this doesn't seem to be able to handle loud sources. Uh, like, listen to that. The guitar tone is just uh, farting out like crazy, and the amp isn't even very loud. Here's what happens if we turn the amp down to the point where it's barely audible.
Okay, that's a significant improvement, but I mean, like the whole point for micing guitar cabs is you want to get the speaker physically moving. You want that cabinet vibrating because that's a big part of the sound. And for that, that application, this mic is just absolutely worthless. Speaking of loud sources though, let's hear what it sounds like on drums. All right, so I moved over to the kit here and I've got both the mics just up out of the way and it's just a mono overhead. I just wanna show the difference in tone quality you're going to get. Now, please excuse me. I am the absolute worst drummer in the world. There's a very good reason why I have talented guys like Cam Flurry and Jackson Ward on the show whenever I can get them. Simply because I'm not capable of playing the drums with any kind of proficiency. I just don't have the time to put into it. Anyway, here we go. Now, for all you guys sitting at home wondering, hey, well, why can't we just EQ some treble in? It's like, not really. You're just gonna be rolling a turd in glitter at this point. I mean, you can turn the treble up, but you can't turn up frequencies which aren't actually there. If the microphone isn't giving you a good source tone to work with, then you're not going to get a good end result. And this has been one of the underlying themes of this show for I don't know how long. It's make sure you start with a good source. This is not a good source. Now, if you take a look at the waveforms that this piece of shit creates, you can see they're just absolutely pancaked in comparison to the U87. It's painfully obvious that the capsule is incapable of handling anything from moderately loud to very loud sources, just very soft stuff. It's merely bad, but as soon as you turn the volume up, it just turns into complete and total dog shit. And that's the thing. I started recording back in 1997. I've worked with a lot of mics over the years, and this might possibly be the worst mic I have ever recorded. Please, for the love of Chrome, I implore you, do not send AliExpress your money for a U87 clone mic. It is not worth even 10 fucking cents. I mean, to be completely honest, the best thing that came in this box was the fucking shock mount. Seriously, this is, it, and the, even the shock mount's not that fucking great. Please don't throw your money away on this. It's an absolute piece of fucking garbage. There are far better options in this price range. Like this guy here, this is the Zoom ZDM1 microphone. It's a large diaphragm dynamic that I picked up for like 60 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna have a review coming out on this in the next week or two. And yeah, so far the results have been pretty impressive. Now, of course, my favorite low priced mic, it's gotta be the 240 Pro from Lewitt and that's 150 bucks and sounds about 10,000 times better than this fucking piece of garbage. Seriously, guys, there are far better options to spend your money on. Don't waste your money on this total pile of shit. I get it though. It says professional studio microphone on the box, but there's absolutely nothing professional about this microphone whatsoever. Now, normally I can usually take even an even less than favorite mic and find a use for it. You know, throw it up in a hallway, hit it with a compressor, that kind of thing. But honestly, this thing has just been completely underwhelming on every single source I've thrown at it. Uh, and for that, this mic needs to meet the hammer of truth. Thank <laughs> you.